When I worked at NASA, um, probably 1997, 98, um, the guys in the photo lab, um, two of them were coming out of their office at the same time I was leaving my office. And I heard them laughing and saying they couldn't believe that people believed in the fake moon landing. Seven, one of the guys I worked with at Lockheed Martin uh, told me that the Earth was flat. Um, so you have a Fort Worth connection. I do okay. have a Fort Worth connection. And that is? I worked for Lockheed Martin in White Settlement, which is Fort Worth, Texas, for a period of time. Um, that was not one of my fun um, positions. That was strictly business, financial gotcha. business stuff. Gotcha. Just wanted to bring it up because we are Flat Worth and we're in Fort Worth. So right. just want to make that connection. I did live in Fort Worth for two years. All right. That's, that, uh, that's enough in my book. <laughs> okay. So talk a little about how you came to work at NASA, your credentials, and your role while you were there. It's a big question. Okay, so back in the early 90s, I was a college student and was working at the Air Force Base, Edwards Air Force Base. Um, some of the folks that I worked with suggested that I apply for a position at NASA because I was um, going into an IT uh, college degree. And um, so I did, I found in the base paper, they had a bunch of positions um, posted for women, mostly women for some huh. reason, which is interesting. Back in the 1990s, they were pushing that. Um, so I applied, and it was very simple. It wasn't like you do today. It was a very simple process. And so in 1996, I was hired on with a contractor for NASA. The contractor is called Woodside Summit Group, and um, they they do various contracts, not just NASA. But um, I worked directly in a NASA facility called Dryden Flight Research Center, which is one of the main um, NASA facilities in the U.S. I worked there from 1996 until 2000. Um, credentials was basic, very basic. I had two and a half years of college under my belt, and um, they were looking for people just out of school. So they liked that I had some college, and then they trained me on my position and then expanded from there. It was a lot of fun. Um, I learned a ton in the four years I was there, IT stuff. So doing IT stuff like um, in charge of servers and Correct. things like that. I had four servers in my office. I had my own office, uh, which was located right next to the photo lab, which was a unique place to be anyway. Yeah. Um, so I had four servers. My servers were the backup servers for all the computers at the facility. Okay. The entire facility? The entire dry facility. Gotcha. Did all the backups. Um, it would go, it would rotate through computers each night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what kind of degree did you get? Um, it's or what, what did you study? Business you IT. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, how how did you come into Flat Earth? Because you weren't a Flat Earther when you worked at NASA. Correct. Right? So tell me about that journey. So um, it's actually, if you don't mind if I go back a little bit Please. further. Um, when I worked at NASA, um, probably 1997, 98, um, the guys in the photo lab, um, two of them, were coming out of their office at the same time I was leaving my office and I heard them laughing and saying they couldn't believe that people believed in the fake moon landings. Huh. Now obviously I wasn't aware of any of this then. I had no idea so I honestly just thought they were crazy. Um, so I kind of brushed it off and I didn't think about it again for many years and then in um, 2007 one of the guys I worked with at Lockheed Martin uh, told me that the earth was flat huh. and I discarded the information because he didn't really give me a lot of detail. He 
who was an engineer, very smart guy on the F-117. Um, wait, wait, a smart guy that believed in a flat earth? Very educated. Okay. okay. Very educated, and very gotcha. smart, and aerospace okay. background. Um, told me that the earth was flat, and again, I discarded it because it, just, it was just um, nonsense at the time. So fast forward a couple of years, and um, in 2009, I woke up to pretty much everything. Um, and <laughs> that's, it's a hard awakening when it's all in one, but sure. fake moon landings, 9-11 inside job, uh, chemtrails, harp, and you just fill in the blanks mm -hmm. from there. Um, I started to research like crazy. Um, so from 2009 until May of uh, 2016, I was just researching, studying. Um, I worked for the government until 2012. So um, NASA, then Air Force, then Lockheed, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> um, but in May of 2016, um, I was doing my research and um, I ran across a video that said 75 biblical proofs of flat earth and I was intrigued having had it sort of in my face a couple of times and knowing the moon landings were faked. So I uh, watched it and my life hasn't been the same since that moment. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. Um... So your background, I mean, you're a Christian, right? Correct. Or you believe in the Bible? I do believe in the okay. Bible. Okay. Um, because I, I, lately I've found that Christian just means you take the scientific worldview and project it back on the Bible. But if you actually believe in the Bible, uh, that's a different story. Correct. Right? If you believe in a literal biblical account. The geocentric account. Right. Account. You have a geocentric account. Yes. Um, so in that process, was there... Was there one verse that like really jumped out at you or um, just kind of like hit you for the first time again, you know, when you reread it from a flat earth perspective? So what I did was the book of Genesis, chapter one. Um, I went through the entire chapter for about three hours and went verse by verse um, because that's the account of creation. And so when you look at it with an open mind and um, believing in a literal Bible, which I do, um, then you stop and you take account of each verse. And when you do that and you go through the entire chapter, then suddenly you can see creation in a different light. It's, um, it's, it's never taught to us that way. So to read it with a different mindset, an open mind, then the entire chapter basically tells you how God put Earth together. Mm -hmm. It's like a terrarium. Sure. Kind of. Yeah, I mean, my, my whole deal is, one, if you can even get past the idea of a firmament with waters above and waters below, but the fact that God created the Earth first, and then He created the Sun, you know, and, and so what was the Earth rotating around for right. three days until the Sun was created? And right. I've, I've come to the conclusion that if that is true, it was rotating around Chuck Norris, probably. <laughs> um, I can't come up with any other solution. Um, who's an Illuminati shill, by the way? Chuck Norris is. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, I'm just I just can't though. Research that one. Um, <laughs> joke. I don't want him coming after me. <laughs> yeah. um, so, tell me a little bit about the work environment at NASA. You know, um, yeah, just kind of elaborate on atmosphere. Do people like each other? Yeah, you know? great atmosphere. I actually miss it. I have dreams about working there still. Hmm. So as bizarre as that sounds, I, I miss the entire uh, everything. The people, the facility, the things that we did. Um, it was a very important role. Um, I was part of Y2K. Y2K was this big you mm -hmm. know, false flag, basically. Right. Um, but you know, you feel important, you feel good. Everybody there was um, on the same team. You really felt like a team member, and um, we had a lot of fun. We had events. We had uh, a lot of food, <laughs> catered events, and um, I don't know. It was just unique. I was friends with a lot of pilots, 
you know, who, who can say that they worked alongside an SR-71 pilot. Yeah, Maverick and Goose, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so you talked a little bit about the photographer story. And, you know, the moon landing is a, it's a conspiracy. You can be a non-flat earther, you can be a ball earther and not believe we went to the moon. In fact, one of the guys on, on the show, his name's Chad, I mean, he, I wouldn't call him a flat earther, but he does not believe we went to the moon. I mean, he thinks it looks ridiculous, okay. you know. And um, so I'm curious, um, you know, back when you heard them say that, did it, did it, have, did it touch any points where you had said, oh yeah, you know, people, I've heard people that say they didn't think we went to the moon, or was that kind of the first time you'd heard that idea? That was the first time, and to be honest with you, um, I didn't, I didn't take it seriously in, in any aspect. I supported NASA, I supported what they did, mm -hmm. um, I, and I think the majority of people who work for NASA really enjoy what they do and support what they do. You wouldn't question it, mm -hmm. you just, you wouldn't. So, for the photographers to say something like that is a little weird, right? Mm -hmm. Well, a few months ago I realized that when I got my tours through the photo lab, there were no pictures of space. They were all jets. Hmm. So the photo lab has a lot of photos, but none of space. Wow. Yeah. So brings me to my next question. I've heard you mention how you've met Math Powerland before, mm -hmm. or Matt Boylan, yes. um, who claims, I have no reason not to believe him, claims that he was a photorealist painter for NASA. Um, yeah. And did you know of any other quote unquote painters that were that were there while you were there? I did not. In fact, I, did, I knew we had painters um, because um, when you walked into the main building where I worked, I think it was building 1600, um, in that foyer we had a beautiful painting of um, the globe mm. <laughs> that we knew was a painting because they made a big deal out of right. it and presented it and gave it to us in our building. And um, So I knew there were painters, but um, I just thought painting. I didn't, yeah. I, I never put two and two together. Yeah, I mean, he's become famous for saying photo or painting, right? Right. Um, so, I mean, it seems to me that 90, probably 95% of people work at NASA and don't even know there's a debate about the shape of the Earth. That's right. That's right. If I had to guess based on um, what I know now, what I knew then, they wouldn't even, you wouldn't question it. It's not something you'd even think about. Right. Right. Yeah, and and so to me, I mean, it, even even there would have to be a percentage that knew they were hiding something, but they don't even have to know that that's what they're hiding. Right. I mean, they, for all they know, an astronaut, for example, could be told, "Hey, we're." We're not sending you up because we're saving money. We're using it for anti-terrorism. Absolutely. You know, um, everything is um, parceled. Everything compartmentalized. is compartmentalized. Compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. You, you have a specific need to know, mm -hmm. and that's true with NASA, Air Force, Lockheed, every government position I've had. It was always need to know, and so you don't really ask outside of the parameter of your position. Um, it's kind of a no-no. It's kind of a you just know not well, to. Yeah, and if you do ask and you're told something, then you're responsible for it, right? And anybody who knows something and they tell you, then they're in deep water because right. you're only allowed to speak about what you're allowed to speak about. With So my badge would have colors on it, and those colors dictate what um, areas I'm allowed to go into, what my need to know is. And so everybody has specific things on their badge. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about your program, and you're talking to someone whose badge clearly doesn't show that they're unbriefed in that program, then you're, yeah, you're going to get in trouble mm -hmm. for speaking about it. And so from what I understand, there, there were some things that you were briefed in on, mm -hmm. which you weren't allowed to speak on, which you've never spoken on Correct. because of your duty. Right. Um, so give me an idea of, on like 1 to 10, from your point of view, what your clearance level was and then relate that to maybe the percentage of the facility you were even allowed to go into or would it be even hard to even speculate on that 
So I worked on something called a black project. When you work on a black project, it doesn't exist. And that's pretty much, um, if you look at my going away um, placard from the F-117 program and I went into the black program, it says, um, be a light on the dark side. The reason it says that is because I was going into a black program. Mm. So, which begs the question, if a project doesn't exist, where does it get funding from? Same place, but it has um, a name that, that isn't its name. Right. It's hard to explain that. Sure. No, I get it. So, so my point would be, you know, if, if NASA is getting $50 million a day and they are not sending right. rockets up or people up, <clears throat> then they've got extra money for quote-unquote black projects. Right. And, um, and yeah, so that, that's super interesting. Yes. Okay. Um, do you, knowing what you know now or knowing what you believe now, do you have any guilt associated with having worked there or, or anything like that? No, or? I don't have guilt, but I do have a little bit of um, shame for our government um, in that I, I I was a big patriot, very pro-American, very pro-Republican. Um, you know, I was just a very, you know, pro-government, pro-Air Force. And not that I'm not still, because the people who work there, they're they're still good people, you know, they don't know. Um, but I'm ashamed of the people who are at the top level who know this and they don't have guilt and they send stuff down the pipe to the people who the regular everyday people to do these jobs and these jobs are pretty much created jobs in order to, to create this atmosphere. You have to have a budget office, you have to have an IT to support all the computers. What are they actually working on? Right. Yeah, no, we don't know. So no, I don't have guilt mm -hmm. for my for my what I did. So my buddy uh, Paul, mm -hmm. uh, who does a show with me, he he was talking to a girl who works at NASA, and she works on tracking submarines, mm -hmm. um, which sounds weird to me. So are you aware of that, and or any other non what I would call space-related programs that NASA works on. We didn't have a lot of space stuff at Edwards, um, at Dryden, because um, we were uh, more related to the jets. That's why we were located at um, a, an Air Force facility that supported jet flight. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you there's a lot of programs that are um, unusual. That um, They typically deal with flight, though. I have not heard of a submarine. Um, although it could be a tracking thing that we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, maybe tracking. I mean, it sounded interesting to me. I mean, coming from the biblical mindset of the waters above, you know, um, we were wondering if they were trying to go under and up or something. You yeah, know? I think they are trying to <laughs> test the, wa the mm -hmm. waters, you know. there's. Uh, you've seen the video where they're trying to go through. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's phenomenal they're stuff. They're able to get through that. Mm -hmm. um, so... What would you tell a non-flat earther who's extremely skeptical? Um, if, if it's possible for someone who used to work at NASA to believe in flat earth, it's, it's, I would say it's possible for anybody, but what, right. what would your message be? I would say definitely keep your skepticism because you have to be skeptical of everything, and I am still. But I would say keep an open mind at the same time and just look into it, give it some time. It's not going to happen in one day. And, and you can jokingly say, just give it a day. But the truth is, it, you need more than a day. And you need to be open-minded. And just because it's so taboo doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, it is taboo. And I think there's a reason that it's become that way. I think it was purposeful. Um, anyone who says the earth is flat is crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. <laughs> um, I hold a clearance, and so I, you know I can tell you I'm not crazy. And the people that I've met who are flat earthers are not crazy. Um, what's crazy is not being willing to look at something that's um, unusual with without you know, and don't put it aside without looking into it. Just look at it. Mm -hmm. 
So what would you tell uh, other NASA or ex-NASA or, or government employees that maybe have a weird sense of, of something that might be going on? Or If I was still working, I would be very quiet because of my career. So I get it, and that's the truth. Um, it doesn't mean you have to come out publicly to look into it. It just means you look into it and decide for yourself. You can still quietly share this information with those that you know, the friends, family, your children, and, and say, you know, maybe there's another option here. Maybe this, this ball, this globe, um, is a theory, and we don't maybe have enough fact to back up the theory as fact, because <laughs> we don't. Um, so I would say look into it quietly if, if it's more comfortable to do that, and then just share with those who are close and see what they say. Any passions besides flat earth or biblical cosmology? Truth. I'm a truther. I, I basically code myself as a truther because I can't, I don't, I don't have it in me to, um, to lie that way. I, I don't like lies. I like truth. Why does truther have a negative connotation? Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. It's odd because we tell our kids not to lie. Yeah. Don't lie, you know. Um, and then as adults, somehow it's okay. I'm not sure why that is, but um, I can't help myself. I have an addiction to information. It's kind of a, a weird thing. But I have an addiction to information and I can't get enough. So I'm always researching. I'm always trying to fill my, my mind up with more truth and not junk. I'm very careful about what I allow into my mind. Those are all my questions. Um, I'm going to say something. Is there something else you want to touch on? Um, or think would be beneficial to touch on? I don't know. I just really, it, it's on my heart to share this. I prayed for wisdom. And this is kind of how this happened. Is um, I, I pray. I pray every day. And God is my Savior. God is my God, but Jesus is my Savior. And when I pray, I mean it, and God knows my heart. And I prayed for wisdom, and three days later, I found that video. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I believe that that was his plan. And it's only only opened my mind and to the truth of the spirit world more, and not in a weird way. The spirit world is real. God is in the spirit world. We're not there. We're here on the earth that he created for us. So um, as a Christian, and that's probably the number one thing about who I am, is I am, I belong to Jesus Christ. Um, and not all flat earthers are Christians. I get that. And they don't have to be. But um, I can tell you that um, I'm more blessed in my walk, in my faith, than I ever was prior to understanding the geocentric model. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, amen. So, one of the things that is super important here that I think everybody needs to take from Cindy's story is that you can work someplace and not necessarily be part of the overall lie, okay, if there's an overall lie, which I believe there is. And what I want you to do is take take her story and apply it to your life. So, so me, I, I work, one of the things I do is I'm in commercial construction and I do pricing and estimating for large construction jobs. But I don't swing a hammer, I don't lay tile. Um, I sit at a computer and I plug numbers into a spreadsheet. And, you know, we're out of Fort Worth, but we build jobs in Austin and Houston and, and there's jobs that I've worked on at the computer that are now built and um, you know people are living in that I've I've never gone down and seen I've never touched so um, you know maybe that's a conspiracy in my life that maybe we don't actually build buildings but um, I do I do know that we have a team down there and that supposedly those buildings were built and um, people are living in them now and so 
I can see how 99% of people at NASA, uh, probably 95 of those 99, don't even know that flat Earth is a debate. And the 99 are sincerely doing their job, um, the best that they can do, and serving their country. And I believe that's the case. And then I believe, of, then there's the 1%, which in my opinion, 99% of that 1% um, may know that they are being deceptive or hiding something, but not, they may not know they're hiding the shape of the Earth. They may be hiding the fact that maybe they're not going to space, maybe they're, they're faking that they're going to space in order to save money so those funds can be used for black book operation type stuff or to fight anti-terror. Um, I know that if someone came to me and said that I needed to fake being a construction worker so that they could use a salary to go fight terror in some country, that sounds like something I would sign up for. Um, and, and, I, and so I can see how people can be deceptive, but do it in an honorable way. And so I think that of the 1%, 99% of the 1% are acting in that way. And, and then the last 1%, you know, uh, the 1% of the 1% um, would know um, what is going on. And so while it does seem like an insanely large conspiracy, I don't, I don't believe that it has to be. I think even the astronauts, for, an ex for example, can be in on it but not know what they're in on. The, and, and flat earth just sounds ridiculous to them because um, there's no reason for them to doubt um, what their superiors are telling them. So um, combine that, you know, I, I, I got a construction degree, but I didn't build one building while I was in uh, school. You know, I, it wasn't until I got out in the field and did an internship for three months where I literally learned more than I learned in three years of school no offense to where I went, but that's just how it works. You learn how to do your job. And so people that have physics degrees, astronomy degrees, that's awesome, but they got their degree by regurgitating what their teacher of the books told them. And so, um, you know, school teaches you what to think, not how to think. And when she talked about the lack of critical thinking in our world, that is, it's a huge void. And so all we're trying to do with this is to get you to ask questions and um, don't be so attached to the ball because it's not yours. You didn't invent it, okay? There's no reason for you to cling to it like you created it. Um, all we want is for you to question because condemnation prior to investigation is ignorance. And um, we don't want you to be ignorant, and I'm not saying I have proof that it's not a ball. All I'm asking you is to look into it. So um, I want to thank Cindy for coming on. Um, we really appreciate it, and as always, thank you for 